Test. All right. OK, so let's talk about deploying your Python app with Docker and Poetry. Um, so ideally, hopefully by the end of the talk, you'll have a better idea of, or you'll have a framework for producing your code with a smaller attack surface, uh, a smaller production image, which will lead to faster deployment, and ultimately repeatable builds. Sorry, lost the mic here. repeatable builds across multiple platforms. So whether you're on OS X, you've got a developer on Windows, somebody's on a Linux box, or you're just deploying in the cloud, this will get you there. OK, so what this talk is not, it's not a deep dive into Docker, Docker Compose, Poetry, Virtual Lamp, or Makefile. We will be discussing these technologies, but really these technologies each like deserve their own talk. So I'll just high level introduction to them. So what we will walk away with, though, is a framework, you know, a working example of how to build a containerized app with Poetry and Docker. And really, we're going to be talking through or about three big files here. So they're not huge. Uh, but make file, that's kind of going to be our entry point into these different systems. Um, and really, that's going to run like we're going to do our make up, our make down. Uh, that's going to bring up our Docker Compose environment and bring it down. You can run a make test. You can run your whole test suite with that simple command. Um, so jumping into the Docker Compose, that really is just going to target our, our base image. I'm calling it Python image at this point. And what that Docker Compose is doing is it's targeting, let's see. Oh, did I lose full screen over there? How's that? OK. I won't mess with that. So Docker Compose is really just targeting the development image inside of our Docker file. The Docker file is a multi-stage build. So at the very top, we're going to have that base Python image. That's where you declare your Python, 3.11, 3.12, whatever you're into. Um, but really in the center where we see uh, dev poetry, that's kind of where you're going to spend most of your time as the developer. Um, you're going to be changing the files on your local system, but and they'll also change in the Docker container. I know I get a lot of questions it's like, well, how do I change a file? Do I have to like do a re recompose? Do I got to do Docker Compose up again? Not really. Uh, with Docker Compose, you can kind of attach your current working directory. That's what you see code there. You can attach your current working directory inside your development container. So any changes you make inside the container will show up on your local host and vice versa. And then finally, what we will be shipping is the final image called production there. Uh, and that, all that really is is just the wheel of your source code and that base image really just contains like Python 3.11. So let's, let's talk about what that looks like. So this make file, it's really just a convenience. Think of it as an alias for the Docker Compose files uh, commands. So the one that gets used the most is going to be you know, make up. And that's really going to bring up my uh, Docker Compose environment. Uh, and then I'm running a second command, if you see there. So I'm running Docker Compose up, and then I'm running Docker Compose again. And that's doing a poetry install. And what that's doing is essentially the first one will install my dependencies into the container. The second time I run poetry install, what that does is that's going to install my source code as an editable package. So let's see. Oh, did I skip it? There we go. OK. So what that looks like. OK. So you're going to run makeup. You can see, let's see, can I get the mouse over there? No? OK. There we are. So makeup, that's going to bring up our initial Docker environment. As you see here, it's pulling down the Python base image 3.11. We're going to install our dependencies here. I'm, I'm using poetry. Um, What's not seen here, though, is step two, where we attach our current working directory inside the container. That's done through Docker Compose. We'll jump into that next. And then finally, you see here, when we run that second uh, poetry install command, it actually installs our package as an editable install. Give me a second here. OK. So what's happening here with Docker Compose small file, what it's doing here is it's really targeting just the development stage inside of our Docker file. 
Um, this is kind of where the magic happens, where you see volumes. So that dot is essentially ta saying, take the current directory and attach it to a folder called app inside the container. And then I, what I like to do for convenience is our entry point is just sleep infinity, which means just keep the container up always. That way I can jump into it, run commands inside of it, run my tests inside of it. So the three stages of the Docker file, base, dev, and prod. Um, so let's jump into these. So the base image is going to be, in this case, 311. Um, I'm using 311 Slim to kind of keep it small. And I'm installing here GCC. You don't need to do that. If you're, if you're not using the scientific stack, you probably don't need GCC at all. Uh, if you want to make this even smaller, you could um, use like Alpine. And then you're talking like megabytes uh, in terms of a, a base image. So the development stage, again, this is kind of like where you're going to live as a developer. Here we're going to call out some environment variables. So this is where we want our virtual environment to be stood up inside of this uh, PyVA VM. Here we get to declare which version of Poetry we want to install. Here you see that being installed that in, in that development container. Uh, one thing I kind of glossed over, sorry. So one thing we declare at the very top is I'm saying from base as development. So from that base image, let's start building more layers on top of that. Um, so we install our version of poetry. We install our TOML file here. So we copy over our TOML file, which is then is going to install our dependencies. So if you're not familiar with TOML file, think of it as like your requirements.txt, but you get some hashes with the lock file. Uh, we then install that into our virtual environment and run poetry install. That'll install the dependencies. Again, Docker Compose then runs again, and it'll install your package as an, as an editable install. There's an intermediate step in between prod. This is called this builder stage, where that, all that really does is it says, hey, let's run poetry install, this time without dev. Dev is a, with poetry, you have this notion of groups. So you could have your main dependencies, and then you could have different groups. Um, in this particular case, I call this group dev, where that just has your development um, dependencies. So that could be like matplotlib or Jupyter Notebook, but maybe in production, you actually don't need Jupyter Notebook running, right? You don't need matplotlib. So you could declare that there. And really, this intermediate stage is all about just building this wheel. And what do we do with the wheel? Again, from the production image, we start with base at the very top, so it's the smallest image. We take that wheel that was uh, created in the build stage, and we just run pip install. This is the TOML file I was explaining earlier. Um, so the, the main takeaways here is, where is it? Did I gloss over it? OK, so these are our main dependencies. In this particular case, I have a small app. All it really needs is requests. Um, this is where you, you could call out your development dependencies. Again, I've got like, you know, your linting, your, your formatting, all of that can kind of live here, but it doesn't need to deploy with your app. Uh, and then the other nice thing about these TOML files is you can declare a, an executable script. So in this particular case, if you look at my source code, um, I have inside of the PyBay folder, there's another folder called service, a module called CLI. Inside that module, there's a function called fetch date. I can call that whole little uh, stack by just running this executable PyBay 2023, and that's that's all it really does. It just goes out, fetch, it goes out to the internet, it fetches the, you know the time from a URL. Um, but why I'm showing you this is what's nice is again I can edit this in my IDE of choice, and then I can just run it again in that container without having to restart the container. Okay, so it's not just about shipping. Sorry. It's not just about shipping smaller production images, right? So the development image with all of your dev dependencies is close to a gigabyte. Um, but the production image is like about 400 megabytes. And then like I said, if you don't need GCC or if you're comfortable with using Alpine, you can get that to 10, 20 megabytes. Um, but really, it's, it's about um, just having a smaller attack surface. Uh, and again, so these smaller production images means you're going to have a faster deployment. And you're going to have repeatable builds across these multiple platforms. Um, what I'm showing you here on the left is I've jumped into the development image. So I've, this is my make shell command, my little alias. Uh, and if I run ls inside that, you see I have access to all of my source code. 
again, like I said, if I edit any of those files, they'll be edited on my local host. Um, on the right-hand side, I've jumped into the production image, and I run LS. You see there's nothing there. Uh, let's see if, let's see if, okay. If I can demo some of this. So if I say, make up, it's cache, it's gonna run pretty fast. Um, make shell will drop me into my container on this side. Let's jump into that production image. So this will build it again, it's cache, so it's gonna go pretty fast. Um, let's see if I can jump into it. And finally, if I just run my app, not like that. Okay, great. See, so you went out to the internet, pulled down the time. Oh, where is it? Okay. So with that, I wish you all the best of luck deploying your containerized Python applications, and I recommend you use this framework for building your apps. Thanks. Uh, folks, we only have time for one question. Uh, forgive me if this is a naive question. I do a lot of relatively, relatively simple uh, Python scripting and uh, microservices. It, is it a pattern to use a Venv a virtual environment inside of a Docker container? Uh, uh, I haven't seen that in my work, but I'm curious what the reasoning for that would be. Yeah, I know it's kind of controversial a little bit. Um, some people will say, well, you don't want to mess with system Python. Um, I do it as a convenience at the beginning. So in my development image, I will set up that virtual env, but in the production image, I don't use a virtual env. So, yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Christian.